Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Hope you are okay on that side of the screen. And today here I am with an interesting motherboard that I want to share with you some of its features. This is the Asus Tough Gaming B560 Plus Wi-Fi. Now, without any intro, let's go straight for it. In my opinion, there are a few things that I would see myself enjoying a little bit more as a consumer that could be improved, but very uh, picky things it is a motherboard that it's not a entry-level motherboard but it's not a high-end enthusiastic motherboard so we will be sitting there on the lower mid-range in terms of pricing but i do believe that in terms of features it is not that the case we are a bit higher having that said let me share with you this angle right over here so that i can share a few things with you now let's start with the uh, design itself because this is probably the first thing that i'm a bit picky and although no one will be seeing the back of the motherboard in this particular case we will because i will be using on this open rig but I do believe that this being the tough gaming series motherboard at the back, it could have a little bit more enclosure, I don't know, to hide the connectors and so on and so forth. But this is just my feeling. The reality is that we will put this inside a normal case. I've got a few right over there and we will not be able to tell anything. Now at the front, I do enjoy the design of the tough uh, gaming line this is no surprise for you guys and if i show you right over here in terms of the overall design we have these really nice dissipators right over here the back io shield is integrated so really cool touch right over here we will not be losing the back io shield and then the overall design looks really really nice now starting with the back io really quick we will have a display port and hdmi out in case we use a cpu that has uh, integrated graphics and then right over here we have two usb uh, 3.2 generation one and then three usb 2.0 right over here these three black uh, ones and then we also have a usb 3.2 generation one type c and two usb 3.0 generation 2. one really interesting thing is the ethernet connection is a ethernet 2.5 gigabit which as you guys know i've got a new switch uh, the kinap switch if you haven't checked it out i'll leave a link somewhere right over here with two 10 gigabit ports and then eight 2.5 gigabit and i'm trying to expand my network to 2.5 at least and where possible then Gigabit. so really interesting this motherboard having this feature which is really nice and then we also have the wi-fi and bluetooth connections right over here that comes with this antenna that we will uh, plug it in and this adapter which is basically a support to put it and then right over here the audio input and output and we've got the uh, choice that usually we find on this kind of of motherboards so in terms of the overall look in terms of the outside this is it now looking inside and going a little bit for those more boring details let's just take a look at something interesting at least which is leds everyone loves uh, leds at least i do at, we will find a 12 volt led connector right over here and a 5 volt right over here and then also at the bottom we'll find a 12 volt and 5 volt so i can easily connect four led strips or led devices a cooler for example i've got a few coolers that we can use a led connection and then we will synchronize with our sync and do all those color effects and so on and so forth which is really cool now if we take a closer look we've got for DIMS DDR4, which can uh, have a maximum of 128 gigs of RAM with a maximum overclock of 5000 megahertz, which is just awesome. So we will be able to put four sticks of 32 gigs each one. And I've shown a video where I can use 64. I still haven't uh, managed to show a video using 128, but 
probably one day I'll do that using After Effects. Now, moving along, we will have the uh, CPU slot for 10th or 11th generation. This is prepared for 11th generation, but compatible with 10th generations. There are a couple of things that will not work using 10th generation CPU, but uh, it's great to see that we move to the 11th generation, but the 10th generation is supported, which is really nice. Actually, at this moment, I'll be using an i5-10400 uh, with integrated graphics, but I will be getting really soon a 11600K CPU to put on this particular system so that I can make some comparisons and take my questions and take your questions and so on and so forth. Now, moving along, we have, in terms of storage, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm not showing you, one, two, three, four, five, six SATAs connections right over here. And then we also have one and two uh, M.2 slots. Now, this is one of the things that I would, uh, this is the second, I think it's the last uh, picky things, I would love to see another dissipator right over here. And although I can remove this one from here and put it right over here, why not have two aces? Why? Because I've got a BIOS star right over there that you guys have seen here on the channel. It also has two M.2 slots and it has two dissipators. So, ah, come on, charge us two more euros and give us another dissipator. At least it would look really cool or more cool than it already looks. Now, one of the things that we will notice is that if we are using generation 10 CPUs, we will only be able to use one of the M.2 slots. So one of them will be disabled. I'm not sure which one, I will have to test it out, assemble the computer to be able to tell, but one of uh, those will be disabled and the one active will be PCI 3.0 which means that we will not be able to take advantage of the fastest NVMe SSDs that we have. In my particular case, the Sabrent uh, Rocket NVMe 4.0, which is the fastest one in the planet. There are uh, a couple more that can reach 5,000 megabytes per second on reads and writes, but I will not be able to do so if I don't have a 11th generation CPU. So this is one of the things that we will find right over here. Now, in terms of PCIs, we will have a, a 16, once again, a PCI 4.0 using a CPU with the 11th generation. And this is one of the things that I'm curious uh, if we have the uh, 10th generation, it will be PCI 3.0. So I'm curious to put in a, I don't know, NVIDIA 380, one of those that I've got right over here, test it out with 11th and 10th generation to see if we notice any difference or not. That's one of the questions that I've got and I will be answering myself and to you as well. Now this one right over here is PCI 3.0, regardless of the CPU. And then we've got a one-time PCI uh, three times right over here. And what else do we have? Uh, fan connectivity, we will find two right over here for the CPU and optional right, right over here. And then we also have another two right over here. So one, two and plus two right over here at the bottom. So that makes six connectors to uh, fans with PWM controllers, which is just awesome. Storage we have covered, the dissipator. Uh, we also have right over here, a connectivity for the front IO. And this one is for the USB type C front uh, 3.0 generation one. And we also have right over here, this one is a 3.2 generation one type A. And we also have right over here, two connectors for USB 2.0 and right over here, the Thunderbolt header that we can connect to a Thunderbolt. I'm also curious to test out, test out Thunderbolt on this device. I do believe that we need an uh, accessory from uh, Asus, but we will be trying to test that out as well. And basically, guys, I do believe that I'm not forgetting anything at this moment. So, looks cool. It's cool. I do believe that it will work great. It has some really interesting features that I already mentioned. I will leave a link down below so that you guys can check out all the specifications and what it does and it doesn't. Uh, and I will be sharing more videos using this and other components on this really nice frame that 
we assembled on one of the last videos which is awesome and gives me a lot of freedom to show off <laughs> uh, components hardware components such as this one gpus and coolers and so on so forth so i'm really happy with this setup right over here and that is it hope that you guys enjoyed the video and if you did so don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there which is really appreciated right over here my name is Roberto George and as always I'll see you guys on the next one